Hi and welcome back to a new video on my desk. You can see an external GPU box from Auros and it contains a RTX 3080 desktop unit, which should be quite interesting. We covered such units already twice, I think, on my channel. Once it was an Asus product that was like two years or already ago and it was a massive thing which you could open and put in air-cooled GPUs. Then we had a similar version from Razer that was like one year ago, which was just smaller, but it was, it was still for air-cooled GPUs and now this thing with the RTX 3080, it has an RTX 3080 water cooled inside, which is quite interesting, I think. It's quite compact. It's also, considering that it's using water cooling, I would say it's still fairly light, which is okay for traveling. If you can still travel somewhere, somewhere in the next 10 years, we will see. Anyway, we will pair this with my Aero 15 notebook, which has a 3070 mobile sitting inside. Unfortunately, no 3080 mobile. That would be quite interesting. That way we could compare the mobile versus the desktop version. Anyway, should still be quite interesting to see the performance difference. But also, first of all, we will check how this thing looks like inside, especially considering that it's fairly small. Yeah, will be quite interesting um, how they managed to squeeze this inside. Seasonic, the heart of your system. By the way, the box comes in this box, but sits in this bag. So this would be a quite nice solution for traveling. Uh, you can also attach a strip to it. So if you really need it for traveling, you could use it. Included in the delivery, we have a power cord. This could be a EU one or a US one, obviously. And also the Thunderbolt 3 cable, which you need to attach it to your notebook. Uh, yeah. So either Thunderbolt 3 or 4 would be required to use this thing. Quality-wise, the first impression is quite solid. We have a USB-A in front. The whole thing seems to be made out of anodized aluminum. Yeah, quite, quite nice quality. Also doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart in a second, which is good. And then looking at connectivity. Obviously, we have a built-in PSU, which can deliver up to 550 watt, which, which also means that you can at the same time also use this pretty much as a docking station and charge your notebook. So you attach your notebook over the Thunderbolt cable right here. Then you would have Ethernet connector in case your notebook doesn't have one. That is always quite nice to use. And then we have all the outputs from your VGA for some kind of external monitors and also dual USB-A on the bottom. The dust filter option is quite good. You can see there's this tiny handle on the side and then you can pull out the dust filter from behind the side panel, which is a very good solution because this way you don't even have to open the box for cleaning. Yeah, that, that's quite cool. Interestingly, this Gigabyte box seems to be a 90 degree rotated version compared to what we've seen so far. Like the Razer box and the Asus box, they had this, you could call it probably a motherboard as well, um, was sitting on the floor and then you had your card vertically sitting in it, but this looks like a horizontal solution. At least this seems to be like a PCI Express slot, like an X4, X8. And then this seems to be like an ATX connector. All right, interesting. We definitely have to take it apart further. There's not much we can see. This should be the PSU on the bottom. Then we have a tiny fan right here. Not sure what this thing is cooling. VGA is sitting in the middle and seems to be a 240 radiator on top with two 120 millimeter fans. Yep, as expected, 240 radiator sitting on top. And yeah, you could probably see it in that angle as well. It's like a silver, shiny, whatever internals. So this is for sure an aluminum radiator. Yeah, the space efficiency is pretty awesome in this thing. They didn't really waste any space. I mean, Anything between here is just for air intake. You can also see that it's pretty much a standard 3080 from Gigabyte because they make use of those different cables you usually don't use. But in this way, this type of design for the 3080 also kind of makes sense because if they would have the other, like the typical connectors coming out on the right, this thing would be a lot bigger. But that way they can utilize those cables on the back and yeah, interesting, interesting but not that easy to take apart. The GPU was mostly attached on the backside. You can see it's quite loose right now. The PSU seems to be a typical 1HE server PSU from what I can tell right now, which would also make sense because that way you wouldn't have to invest development in a new PSU. And here we also see the tiny motherboard on the side. Don't be afraid, this looks quite dramatic for some reason, but it's pretty stable. I just unplugged this USB connector, which was sitting inside the board right here. And now I still have to remove this tiny cable, which is going here. 
it seems to be for some kind of illumination for the front. And then that's almost pretty much falling apart. There we have the PSU. I just hope that this tiny fan is not that loud because those 40 millimeter fans for servers are usually not made for being extra quiet. But just looking at the spec, it's indeed a 550 watt PSU as expected. Okay, it just took a while because it's just so complex. Everything is squeezed in such a tiny space that it takes quite a lot of time to take this apart. We have the board, radiator, and also finally the GPU. I will not take this apart further simply because we will probably ruin the cooling performance. At least I just want to see how it performs stock. And just judging by looking at the thermal pads, like those underneath, it's very likely that we're going to tear those apart if we remove this cooling block. And that's something I want to avoid because I want to keep the stock cooling performance the way it would be once it arrives at your place. Yeah, everything made out of copper, that's something I absolutely approve. So copper for the MOSFETs on front, for the MOSFETs on the back, for the inductors, all around with the memories and everything. And all the heat will kind of be spread and collected by those heat pipes and then it goes down to the cold plate on the bottom of the AIO. So everything is basically water-cooled. That is pretty awesome. It's not like a hybrid solution, everything will eventually be water-cooled and judging that you probably won't overclock this and it will just run stock, the temperatures, the temperatures should be quite awesome. All right, the board seems to be like any other of those eGPU boxes. We saw so far just a ton of controllers like the US Media controllers and everything for USB, for Ethernet, and obviously Thunderbolt controllers. Then we have some shunt resistors on top right here. Those could be either for the PCI Express slot or also for the output of the Thunderbolt. Could be both. I don't know, would have to measure that, but yeah. Fans also look okay. They don't look like they're the loudest fans on the planet, but we will see that once I'm going to reassemble everything and we're going to check performance. Okay, the box is running. I just wanted to double check that before I completely assemble it again, just to make sure that all the connectors are in place. But it seems to be running. The only thing is that it's just, it's very loud. I'm not sure if that's because some driver is missing or something, but yeah, let's see. The installation is so much better than the original GPU box we tested like two years ago. This really improved. All right, so the 3080 is now just running the dedicated GPU box and I attached Ethernet cable to it and also all my peripherals like keyboard and mouse are connected directly to the external GPU box. That is pretty much the setup how I would personally use it with like an external external monitor to use this pretty much as a docking station connected over the Thunderbolt 3 which is also powering the notebook at the same time. The noise level absolutely improved. It was really just the reason because it was not installed properly but now that all the drivers are installed which happened automatically I didn't really do anything yeah the noise is quite okay I mean you can still hear it but it does it's not annoying so it's okay obviously it would also work to use the external GPU box just to power the notebook and not use an external monitor but that way the data would have to go from the laptop to the GPU box and then back to be displayed on that monitor and yeah we're quite limited in bandwidth on having four PCI Express lanes on Thunderbolt 3, that's why I would personally recommend, or I would always go for an external monitor for the best performance. I'm still mid in between my testing, but for whatever reason, I cannot use my 3070 right now anymore. I'm not sure what causes this, but it seems to be broken. Hmm. I was just running 3 Mark in the background for half an hour in the loop test just to get an idea of maximum fan speed, maximum temperatures and also clocks. We see the fan speed is maxed out at about 1200 RPM, which is a pretty good fan speed and you cannot really hear those fans a lot. If you're getting close, you can hear it, but at the other hand, the laptop fan speed is much more noticeable because of the tiny fans and like high RPM you can hear it much more than the bigger fans from the eGPU box. Clock rate 1950 megahertz constantly all the time. GPU temperature always below 60 degrees Celsius, hotspot below 70 degrees Celsius and the memory temperature below 80 degrees Celsius. That's absolutely a healthy temperature for the GPU so it will be healthy for quite a long time. All right, uh, Sheik decided to join us uh, for the outro. I have quite mixed feelings about this product because it turned out to be completely different than I expected. I have a 3070 mobile in here and then I thought having a 3080, we are kind of able to compare the 3080 desktop versus 3070 mobile using the same CPU, you know what I mean. But then the results are so much worse with the 3080 desktop, probably because of the like Thunderbolt connection and only using X4 lanes. But if you just check If you just check 
the 3D mic times by Extreme GT1 performance, you can see that the 3070 mobile is just below 30 FPS, while the 3080 desktop is just sitting below 24 FPS. So that is a lot slower. And the 3070 mobile is already quite slow, but keep in mind in this chart, if we're comparing all those different GPUs, all the desktop uh, GPUs were done with the 10900K, while the 3070 mobile, and also now this solution is obviously using uh, the mobile CPU. So then I was quite confused and I wasn't sure if everything is running right or if I'm doing anything wrong, but I double checked literally everything. I was reinstalling the drivers. I checked the connection between the box and the laptop, which is confirming PCI Express 3.0 X4 lanes, which is correct for a Thunderbolt 3 connection. But yeah, the, the bandwidth is probably just not enough to keep up with the performance. And that's something we can also see in Remnant from the Ashes running 4K it's pretty much half the performance than using the 3070 mobile. All right, as you can see, completely different setup. It's also almost three weeks later because I double checked the performance results I got from Gigabyte and I said, that can't be right. And I did everything with my Aero 15 to double check, but seems like this notebook had some kind of performance issues. And then I thought, or I remembered that this C590 Aorus Waterforce Extreme motherboard also has a Thunderbolt output. So I decided to just attach the, uh, the eGPU gaming box to a desktop mainboard and this way double check the performance and see if the gaming box works or not. Well, as you can see, the performance is much different. Now it's pretty smooth. Remnant from the Ashes 4K going to perform my typical benchmark run in a second, but as you can see already, that is absolutely playable. That is pretty smooth. So in this setup with uh, the gaming box attached to our C590 board, the performance is, is so much better. Right now in Times by Extreme, we are hitting about 50 FPS, which is about 10% faster than a 3070 desktop. In Times by Extreme, the influence using the Thunderbolt connection is actually not that big. It's also almost on the 3080 desktop performance. Looking in Remnant from the Ashes, it's a little bit different because the 63 average FPS are more on the level of a 2080 Ti, whereas the 27 FPS FPS minimum are a bit behind a 2080 desktop. But it's still much better than what we tested with my Aero 15. Seems like something is wrong with my notebook, like probably I have to reinstall Windows and I don't know, but I don't have a second notebook right here with a strong CPU and also Thunderbolt connection, that's why I cannot verify it. But at least this way I can verify that the gaming GPU box is actually working and the performance is not even that bad. But probably with a properly working notebook you can also get some kind of decent performance out of this box. All right, so much about this gaming box. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Bye bye.